people said, you're crazy. You're buying at the all time high. Well, okay. Let, let me just say for the record, guys, I'm going to be buying at the all time high forever. Bitcoin bull and CEO of MicroStrategy, Michael Saylor, spoke at length with the Up Only podcast in a two hour interview posted on January 26, 2022. Michael showed a very comedic and joyful side in the interview, reliving and explaining his now famous tweet from 2013, stating that Bitcoin would eventually go to zero. And then going into major detail about how he and MicroStrategy did a complete 180 and eventually found Bitcoin. Saylor revealed how he would always buy Bitcoin's all-time high and then explained, with conviction, how Bitcoin can, and eventually will, make it to 200k per Bitcoin and beyond. Listen to his explanation. I think the people that have lived in crypto industry for the last decade, they lived through a very difficult time, and I respect that, you know? And their lessons are their lessons, and and you should respect them for what they, what they learned. But just because you lived through the first decade of the industry doesn't mean that you can draw upon solely your experiences and your data sets to extrapolate the second decade of the industry, right? You, you know, you fought wars with bows and arrows and spears your entire life. And I show up with a bunch of dudes with machine guns and then you, you want to call the battle strategy. And the point is you're fighting the last war. And like, there are, there are elements of what you learned in the past decade that are relevant. But let's, you know, let's point, <clears throat> let's just deal with uh, the elephant in the room here, which is if you look at Bitcoin and you look at all the other cryptos, there's a crypto economy. It's got its own future. It's very complicated and murky. We could talk about it for three hours. It's, there's com competitive issues, security issues, regulatory issues, nation state issues, complicated. Then there's Bitcoin, a digital property on a dominant network. It doesn't need any of the other crypto, whatever, to be successful. For Bitcoin to be successful, there are, there are any of 10,000 entities. The Sovereign Wealth Fund of Abu Dhabi, the Sovereign Wealth Fund of Saudi Arabia, the Qataris, the, Emira you know, the Emiratis, the Norwegian Sovereign Wealth Fund. Every public investor, every macro investor, every large company on earth, any municipality, any state, any government, any, there's 10, 20,000 people, they go to sleep tonight, they could wake up tomorrow morning and they could say, hmm, I think Bitcoin looks like crypto gold. I'm going to go ahead and put 3% of my portfolio in it. That means I'm going to buy $4 billion of it. I'm going to buy 4 or $5 billion of it. It's nothing to me. It's nothing. It's like, a, you know, figure out how important 2% of your money is. It's like that deal. It's like, I noticed it. I'm going to put 2 3% of my assets into it. We'll see where it goes. LFG. And they put the news really out on the wire. And uh, Bitcoin doubles or triples. And then, you know, if, if the sovereign wealth fund of some Middle Eastern state did it, if they bought $5 billion, these people have $500 billion. Like the, the intelligent sovereign wealth funds, they're not, you know, the central banks of smart countries, they're not sitting on a bunch of uh, long dated T-bills. They're not holding a bunch of sovereign debt. They're holding Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Google. You know, it's like, it's the day that, uh, that a Warren Buffett gets up and he says to some dude that works for him, I got 50 billion, figure out something to invest it in. And the dude says, oh, well, we bought $10 billion with Apple. And then Apple triples. And Warren Buffett made more money on Apple stock, which was a delegated decision by a dude. He made more money on Apple stock than he made in his entire life. And he's acknowledged to be like maybe one of the most successful investors of the last hundred years. And yet the thing he made the most money on was like an afterthought. So, so back to what does this mean to Bitcoin? It's like some dude with a $400 billion balance sheet can delegate to a portfolio manager to look at this thing. And that portfolio manager can say, I'm going to put 2% into it. And if, if you pick up the, paper and you read that the sovereign wealth fund of such and such state bought five billion worth of it what happens is the next five countries they think they'll put five billion into it 
And then what happens next is somebody at Google will say, guess we can hold $5 billion of it. And then somebody at Goldman Sachs or Morgan Stanley will say, guess we probably should grab some. And then Ray Dalio with his $50 billion or $100 billion or $150 billion. Okay, well, I guess instead of like half a percent, maybe 3%. Okay, and then all of a sudden Bitcoin spends from 40,000 to 150,000, 200,000. And I guess what I'm telling you is there's 10,000 people that could make $5 billion in 30 days if they wanted to bend over and pick up the money without taking a risk. If you want to watch the full interview, check the link in the description. What do you think of Sailor's thoughts here? When will we see a six-figure Bitcoin price? Comment below. If you found value in the video, please hit the like button. It only takes one second, but it greatly helps the channel, and more importantly, it helps YouTube find someone similar to you who wants to stay up to date to the world of cryptocurrency. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to be notified every time we release a new video. If you're interested in buying cryptocurrency, check out the links in our description to help you with your investing. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.